What's up guys, GT here and welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since you guys saw me so I hope all of you are doing great and hope you guys had a great holiday break and wish you all a very happy and prosperous new year. In this video, we're going to be checking out my thoughts and my review of the new PRS SE Mark Holcomb series signature guitar that I got a few months back. So let's get into it. Now before we begin, it's time for the honorable mentions for this particular video. So thank you so much to Charlie Zimmerman, Chris Wallace and Francesco Gentile. I hope I pronounced your names right. Thank you so much for making a contribution towards the channel and in case you're wondering how you can get a shout out like this on the channel, check the links in the description box below as to how you can support me financially in continuing to make the such videos for you guys and continue to create free tones for you guys as well. All right, enough of that self-promotion, let's get into the video. So when it comes to a guitar review, you would typically hear, you know, YouTubers and different people talking about the specs of the guitar, the, the pickups, the, you know, the neck radius and stuff like that. I'm not gonna do all of that. There are plenty and thousands of videos on YouTube which talk about this guitar. This is a fairly popular guitar and you'll find tons and tons of reviews from people out there. What I'm gonna do instead is tell you a story and hopefully by the end of this video, you will have some perspective around and thoughts around what was my journey in terms of getting this guitar and what are the thoughts that I have to share with you guys. And hopefully that those thoughts might help you in terms of you know, deciding whether you want to buy this guitar or deciding to buy something similar. I know it's it's going to be a lot of talking, so grab a cup of coffee, friends of the channel, you know how we do things on, on here. I like to go into detail and in this case, I like to share my thoughts in deep uh, around what my process was for getting this guitar. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down and hopefully you enjoy this. So it's been a few months since I had this guitar and typically when you would do a review of a guitar, you would do it right after you get it or for any gear for that matter. But for me, it's in a way good that I'm doing this after months of getting this guitar because I've been through a lot with it and I've understood the ins and outs of the guitar and understand how it functions, understand what it can do, what it's capable of, what the tones are, and I've done a few covers with it as well. So I really enjoyed the overall journey and I wanna share that with you guys. So it was back, I think in May or June, 2022, 23, sorry, it's 24 now when I bought this guitar, uh, I actually bought this guitar online. Now, let's, I'll come to that in a bit, but before that, I wanna share why I bought this guitar. Uh, if you're a friend of the channel, you know for the longest time I've been playing the Ernie Ball Music Man JP15 guitar that I have. I do play the Fender Stratocaster as well from time to time. But one of the biggest issues that I have with the JP15 is that it's got not just the JP15, any guitar which has a floating bridge, the biggest issue is that whenever you wanna do something in a drop tuning or an alternate tuning, apart from standard tuning that it comes with, it's always a challenge for you to tune down the guitar because you have to reset the tremolo and level it all up again so that it works perfectly fine. And for somebody who has less time like me, that can always be a challenge, so for me, my covers and my tonal creations have always been restricted to standard tuning on the channel if you've noticed and it was high time i was looking for something which had a fixed bridge and which allowed me to kind of do the different variations of tunings and do covers from bands and you know do covers of songs or create music in a different drop tuning which is pretty popular these days so if it comes to drop c or you know even e flat tunings i could not do that easily on the honeyball music man uh, signature guitar that i have from john petrucci uh, so i had my eye on this guitar from a you know a long time i didn't want to spend like a fortune uh, to buy a guitar and i wanted to buy something which is affordable for everybody so that when i create tones on it it's also possible for you to recreate them if you have similar gear so I was looking for something which is affordable, uh, not spending a fortune, and at the same time, something which offered me good quality and a good brand value as well. PRS is a very well-known name, and Mark Holcomb is a huge name in the you know progressive metal and rock industry. He's from the band Periphery, and he claims this to be his signature guitar, and claims that he has been using this as well. Well, not exactly this. He has probably a modified version of this, but the pickups are the ones he uses live, and the sound that you can get from this is exactly what Mark Halcombe would get. So I began searching for this guitar and as with most of the gear in Australia, I could not find stock for this anywhere in the country. And 
I don't know why. It's probably because of COVID, the impact of COVID or the impact of low stock everywhere or maybe this is just a very popular model. I could not find it in stock anywhere in on any of the stores in Melbourne and uh, there was only one store I found which had like a demo piece lying around for, the, uh, for people to come and test. And I was like, okay, let's do the thing. Let's go there. And I drove like close to 100 kilometers to the store and I sat down and I gave the guitar a try. The first thing I noticed with the guitar as I plugged into the uh, amp was that the pickup sounded absolutely amazing. Uh, this is an amazing sounding guitar. The pickups are really to my taste and to my liking. They are really hot. Coming from the JP15 model, I could really relate to the sound that the pickups had. They have a lot of clarity, uh, you know, coming from what Petru uh, Petrucci plays, the kind of music Petrucci plays and the kind of music that Periphery plays. The tonal requirements, I think, for Periphery is that the notes ring out clearly and this guitar does absolutely that. Uh, I was absolutely blown away with the tonal possibilities that I could just get out of a you know, simple Marshall amp sitting there and the clean sounded really clean and the you know the distorted sounds sounded really sharp and crisp and tight uh, but the issue that i had with that guitar is that for some reason i could not get the g string to be in tune it was in tune it showed absolutely in tune in the uh, you know in the tuner but when i played the a note on the specifically the a note i remember clearly when i played the a note on the g string uh, which is the second fret it would sound off in terms of intonation and I was like oh okay this is a demo piece maybe the intonation has gone off I gave it to the store guys to fix it and they tried like seven eight times and we could not get the intonation correct on the string and I was like okay maybe this is not the piece for me this is a demo piece so I put it down and asked them when can I get a new one and the waiting was like for almost a month and a half for a new you know pieces to come through to the store and I was like, I don't want to wait that long, so let me search more. And then after searching more, I found a store in Brisbane, which is far away from Melbourne, uh, which, is, which was having a piece of this guitar, uh, which was having stock of this guitar as a single piece remaining, which was untouched, unopened, it was not a demo piece. And I was like, okay, let me pull the plug and let me buy this one. Now, that's the first silly mistake I did. Now. To be fair and to be just to me, I bought the Ernie Ball Music Man online as well. Being a great brand, you know you're buying value and PRS is no short of that, right? PRS is a great brand and you can trust and you can vouch for the value that they deliver. And specifically because this being a signature series guitar and you're paying 1500 bucks and plus delivery for it, you can't go wrong, right? It's, it's a good brand, you can vouch for the brand and you can vouch for the quality that you're getting and you can trust them. So I pulled the plug and I bought the guitar online and it came to me, it was as promised, it was untouched and you could, you could see the you know, notice package perfectly, it was not opened and it was in pristine condition. Uh, I was very happy with it. I plugged it into my Axe FX2 and the guitar did not disappoint at all in the first instance because the tone sounded absolutely fantastic and the guitar played like a dream. But when it came to the 14th fret, and the 12th fret on the high E string, I was really disappointed because the moment I played the string and I bend it up, the notes would choke out. And I was like, oh, what's going on over here? This seems to be a problem. And at first I thought the action's too low. Let me try and you know readjust the action. I raised the saddles up a bit. I tried adjusting the truss rod a bit. I tried and tried and tried, but for my luck, I did not get anywhere. Uh, and the notes were still choking out and at that point in time I should have done what everybody should do make a video of it and record it and document it I did not do that probably because you can relate that I was really frustrated and I was really really concerned that I spent $1,500 and I got a lemon okay hold up so I did find an audio clip of myself trying to document the issue I believe this is recorded on my phone and I'm playing the guitar acoustically so it's not the best audio quality but it's better than nothing right if you hear me play the 14th fret on the high E string and I try to bend that note up you will hear the strangy sort of a sound come out which is causing the note to choke out as if the string was touching some other fret this was not present on any other fret and since these are very common frets like the 14th fret the 12th fret and 11th fret you use them a lot in your day-to-day -day playing it was really bumming me out and I was not happy at all. I also tried to document the 20th fret and a bend on that note and it was crystal clear. This is the 14th fret. The 
this is the 20th and the first reaction i had was obviously right to the store and i wrote to the store and uh, the store guys were kind enough they said okay send it back to us you'll have to pay for shipping uh, and we'll look into it and you know we'll send it to prs they'll fix it they'll send it back and i was like that's going to take months right so what's the other option they said you could send it to a store uh, the authorized repair center for prs in melbourne send it to this company they'll look into it they'll fix it up for you they are the authorized prs you know repair center as such so i was like okay that sounds like a plan let's do that so the next thing i do is i take the guitar and i personally drop it at this particular repair center i speak to the guy at the reception he said our luthier is going to fix it up i was like can i talk to the luthier because i can clearly articulate what the problem is it's not buzz it's something else if the notes are choking out and he's like we can't let you speak to the luthier because you would go to them directly and you know it would mean less business for us i was like oh that sounds a little weird but that's okay i made specific notes for the gentleman there and i left the guitar there and i was like okay this sounds good we have a plan in place it's going to get fixed and the guitar was with them for 3 and a half weeks if i recall correctly and multiple calls made multiple follow ups oh our luthier is looking into it and i was like okay it looks like it's taking time because the problem is not just buzz it's probably a, a little problem with the frets and not level or something like that and that's the reason it's taking time 3 and a half weeks later i get a call saying that the guitar is ready for pick up actually it was shipped to me i think it got shipped to me and i received the guitar at home and uh the first thing what would you do you would check if the problem is fixed and to my worst nightmare the problem still existed and the the company basically fixed nothing and i called them up and they said look this much buzz is acceptable when you're playing a guitar in this low tuning and this low action and i was like oh my god uh if you could imagine me doing a face palm that's what i did and i said look buddy i've been playing the guitar for over 10 15 years and i know what buzz is this is not buzz the notes are choking out and this is not fixed this is like and they like this is what we could do the guitar is fixed as per us and now it's a problem you want to take it up with the store you can take it up with them mate and i was like okay that sounds really disappointing and at this point I was literally the place where I thought what are my options should I send this back should I sell it off somewhere or should I just keep it and get used to it I wasn't happy with what I bought and this is where my concern is if you spend 1500 dollars plus shipping on a signature series guitar you expect nothing but quality right I'm not spending 500 and buying a lower end SE model I'm spending quality money and i expect a quality product from a quality brand which is known for creating guitars for a musician who is in a well renowned band touring the world and claiming that this is his guitar and this is how it sounds when i play it what was my next step i contacted the store again the store said we are happy to send it you know we are happy to take it back from you mate and you know our luthier here is an excellent person he's going to look at it and he's going to fix it up for you and we're going to ship it back to you and i was like okay what do i do now at this point i've already spent like close to a month i haven't played the guitar at all and all i've got is frustration and i was like maybe i won't do that because what's the guarantee that the store is going to fix it and send it back or what's the guarantee they're just going to say that you know this is just normal buzz you got to get used to it so i decided to take up matters on my own hand and i contacted a friend of mine and he recommended me to take the guitar to uh Ryan from Color Tone Guitars here in Melbourne and i was like okay let me you know pay him a visit and extremely friendly guy extremely knowledgeable guy he knows what he's doing and he had one look at the guitar like that and he said mate the frets are all unleveled and the fretboard is a gigantic mess i'll have to refret pretty much everything file them down and when you come next time you'll be in love with the guitar i was like okay uh what's it going to cost me he said it's going to cost you you know close to 200 dollars and i was like okay it's a little bit more money spent on something which i shouldn't be spending on but if i want to play this guitar i want it fixed and i want to play it right so i left the guitar with him and he kept it for like a few days only not for weeks and weeks and uh, next time i went there and i played it i was blown away and i was like okay this is what 
the guitar should feel like. This is what the guitar should sound like. And he showed me videos of how many issues the guitar actually had, which I don't want to share here because, you know, I don't want to badmouth PRS as such. But I can tell you that the number of issues with the frets were so many that he had to literally file them. He had to, you know, refret it. And he set it up in such a beautiful way that uh, I actually had to ask him to increase the action a little bit because it was a little too low for my taste. But still there was no fret buzz and I was actually blown away. So in case you're in Melbourne and you want uh, somebody to have a look at your guitar, Ryan's your man. Uh, look him up at Color Tone Guitars. Uh, I'll put the link in the description box as well. You could just Google him up. He did a fantastic job on the guitar. And I came back home as a happy uh, customer. But there are a few takeaways that I want to mention um, from my experience so that you can also follow it and probably not make the same mistakes that I did. First of all, don't be a dumb dumb like me and buy a guitar online. It's like buying a pair of jeans, right? You want to go into the store, you want to try it and you want to buy the jeans that fit you, right? So same with the guitars, go into a store Try the guitar out and buy the one which you like um, and buy the one that feels correct to you, buy the one which has no issues. Check every fret, do all sorts of things, you know, play it acoustically, you know, play it through an amp, uh, play it at low volume, play it at high volume, bend on every possible fret and make sure that what you're buying is of great quality and worth every single dollar that you're spending, right? If you're spending $1,500, you should get nothing but quality and you should not be having to compromise on any single thing that you're buying, right? Because that's the money that you're spending and giving to a company to give you a guitar in return. So you should be getting absolutely 100% worth for your money. I trusted PRS like the way I trusted Anibal Music Man. Clearly, I was not correct. And Ryan also told me that he, have had, he has had multiple of these come to him with the similar problems like mine where the frets are not properly set up and the QC work has just not been done at all. So PRS if you're hearing please take note people are putting their hard-earned money and trust into your products and they expect quality uh, and they expect nothing wrong with the guitar when they're buying specifically a signature series guitar and that too from Mark Holcomb right. So. Second thing I want to say in terms of my learning from what my experience I had when I you know, had to get this guitar fixed. If you know of a certain problem, make sure you explain it properly to the guy who's fixing it. Now in my case, I couldn't speak to the luthier for whatever reasons the company had. I could not directly get in touch with the luthier. Hence, maybe there was a miscommunication as to what the problem was. And I was told that it's just normal guitar buzz. Trust your instincts and you know if you're a guitar player, you know what's wrong with the guitar. Take it to a person who's gonna hear you, who's gonna understand what your problem is and who's gonna guarantee you a fix. Even if it means spending a little bit of extra money, for me it was worth it because now this guitar is absolutely a dream to play and I absolutely love, enjoy playing it and creating tones on it. And speaking of tones, let's jump into the accident now and I'll show you some of the tones that I created using this. Hope you guys enjoyed the story. Let's jump into the accident. Cheers. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at some of the tones that I dialed using this guitar. Um, I've done a few tones with this. I did one cover of an amazing track called Rust by Ragdoll. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you go and check it out. It's on the channel. It's by one of my good friend's band, Leon's band, Ragdoll, amazing track. I love jamming on it, love playing it. Absolutely stunning and I love you know, dialing in the tone as well. I'll, I'll show you what tone I used for that particular cover. But also we look at some clean tone as well because I want to showcase the capability of the pickups that are there on this guitar. All right, so I've got Axe Edit in front of me and the first preset we're going to look at is a clean tone. I'm just calling it PRS clean for the lack of a better word. Um, this is a clean tone that I'm either, I was dialing in the other day. I am actually trying to work out some other tracks as well, which is another thing I really like about this uh, guitar is that I can do alternate tunings very, very easily. And it's allowed me to do much more different styles of covers and different tracks, which I could not cover earlier with the JP15. So I've been trying out some alter bridge and this is a preset that I was creating for one of the tracks that I am trying to work out. The guitar is actually on a different tuning at the moment it's on an e flat but it's a drop d on an e flat so the top string
string is actually a B flat and the rest of the strings are in E flat tuning. Uh, the amp in this preset is a US rhythm. I've got a compressor in front of it. Uh, a little bit of compression there, a uh, very quick attack and uh, the level's at zero. Um, the amp is a USC rhythm. You could use a USC clean as well. I believe this was a standard preset that I kind of, a uh, stock preset that I kind of modified to get the tone that I wanted. Um, the input drives low, bass is low, mid slightly high because of thickness that I need in the clean tone, uh, which you'll hear in a minute. Uh, the treble is also high, presence high, and the master volume I didn't touch. Uh, and the cab is an actually a Petrucci V30 mix because it's a slightly darker cab, but with the high cut all the way up, I think you don't lose much of the top end. And it kind of gives you that warm tone that you look for. It's not very chimey. Uh, the cab really is a good integral part of this particular preset. Then I've got some chorus in there, uh, which is a Dimension 1, which is one of my favorite choruses from the Axifex 2, uh, courtesy of Mr. John Petrucci again. Uh, and I've got a reverb in there, which is a London player, just to add that bit of space that we need. Now, uh, as I said, I'm on a different tuning. The volume's on full. We'll jump to drop C later, but right now we're on E flat, as I mentioned, with the E string at the B flat tuning. The tone's on full, I'm on the neck cup. This is how the tone sounds at the moment. Beautiful tone, I love it. It sounds really, really cool. And what I'm gonna do is switch the pickup now. Let's go to the middle pickup, which is both of the pickups combined together. This is how the part sounds now. What I'm going to do is now do a coil tap mode with this guitar has a coil tap mode inbuilt into it. All you need to do is pull the tone knob. What that does is splits the pickups, the humbuckers into single coils and this is how the tone sounds now. That sounds really cool as well. And the final position is the bridge pickup. This is how the tone sounds. Tell the bridge pickup is really hot and it's doing what a, what typically a bridge pickup should do, isn't it? Now let's play something with a pick as well. If I can find my pick, <laughs> where did I drop it? it? Must be in my pocket. I'll be right back. Two hours later. Finally found the pick. So let's hear something on the neck pickup now. <laughs> Pretty smooth sounding sound and it's got a lot of sustain as well. I was pleasantly surprised with the amount of sustain the pickups have. So I'm going to play a note. I know I've got reverb in there, but even with the reverb, you can still hear the amount of sustain that this guitar has. That's, that's a lot of sustain. I don't know if you could hear that, but there is definitely a good amount of sustain that the the neck provides the probably the wood resonance provides and the pickup as well so really really good stuff what i'm going to do now is i'm going to jump over to the tone that i used for the rust guitar cover that i put in but before that i need to switch my tunings to drop c so i'll do that and i'll be back in a second a few moments later all right, we are back and now we're in drop C tuning. I've got the preset in front of me. This is the preset that I used for the Rust uh, guitar cover, as I mentioned. Uh, amazing track by Ragdoll, which is my good friend Leon's band. I love jamming on it every time. If you haven't checked out the cover, check it out on the channel. This tone is gonna make more sense that way. Uh, it's actually a preset that I used to use day-to-day -day basis with uh, my JP15. I had to tweak it a little bit only to get it to kind of sound the way I wanted to sound, which is kind of a testament to how good the pickups are. 
Uh, I swear by the pickups on the JP15. Uh, they're really good. They're really hot and probably these pickups are hotter and I believe I didn't have to tweak a lot to get that kind of tone that I was looking for. So the amp is a 2C++. It's my favorite amp. Got a lot of, off, uh, lot of overdrive happening over there. Input drive is high, overdrive is high. Bass, mids and trebles are pretty much the way you will dial a Mark uh, series amp. Presence is low. The master volume is kind of in a you know sweet spot where I like it. The GEQ is where the action happens, which is the faders on the actual amp. If you've ever dialed in a Mark series amp, uh, you would know that you would typically dial the standard V curve where you boost some of the lows and the low mids and you scoop out a lot of the mids and you boost the high mids and the highs as well a lot. So you get the standard V curve where this fader is for the mids actually. I've done this a lot on the channel, so if you are not familiar with this, Go check out some of the other videos uh, and you will know what I'm talking about. I've also got a drive pedal in front uh, just to give it that additional boost. Uh, it's not adding any more drive. It's just uh, there for boost and also what this T808 overdrive pedal does is that it tames the low end a bit and it makes it a little more flubby, a little less flubby and tames it and so that it's not that booming and jarring. Uh, it's a very subtle effect but I've learned this over time that you know, having a boost pedal definitely tames the low end a little bit. Uh, the levels on full, everything else is that pretty much stock. Um, the amp we've already covered. I've got a gate in there because there are parts in the track which required certain stops in the playing. So do not get any, you know, flubbiness in the playing and to signal to cut out as soon as you stop playing, a gate is really good. The gate is between the amp and the cab. This is something I've learned from Miko's uh, channel. A really good tip. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, make sure you do that. Uh, cab is a combination of two of my favorite cabs. You've heard me countless number of times about these uh, cabs in the XFX2. They are USA traditional standard cabinets 4x12s and they are pre mic as explained over here. In the advanced tab, I've got the high cut to around 10,800 and the low cut is around 90 hertz. It's sweating hot in Melbourne today. It's close to 33, 34 degrees and it's really hot in the room right now. So if you see me sweating or being anxious, it's probably because of the heat. And plus that I haven't shot a video in a long time. Anyways, back to the video. So I've also got a chorus in there, which is a Dimension 1 chorus. Uh, not very high mix. This is one of my favorite choruses from the Axifix 2. Uh, and this is how the preset sounds. I'm going to be on the bridge pickup now. The volume is going to be on full and the tone is going to be on full. This is how it sounds. <laughs> as well i didn't have to spend too much time as i said transitioning from the jp15 over to this guitar was really easy in terms of the tone because the pickups are hot and they sound quite similar to the kind of tone i'm used to uh, at least for the amps that i chose to i don't know any periphery songs at the moment i'm not that skilled but i'm working on them i should be on them very soon but that's the two presets that i wanted to show you guys i think for the lead tone i just added some delay and more drive to this uh, particular preset so there's not much that I want to show over there. Um, but I will definitely cover more tracks using this guitar now, now that I can do alternate tunings. And so do stay on the channel, do stay tuned for those. If you have any suggestions of good tracks that I can cover using this guitar, please let me know uh, in the comments below. And uh, here's the final question. 
do you think you like the sounds coming out of this guitar do you see yourself buying this guitar uh, do you see yourself uh, investing the kind of money that it needs and obviously i talked about some of the problems that came along with this guitar are you okay to kind of get the guitar and have i mean i hope you get a piece which is much better in condition than mine but these guitars are very very good otherwise if weren't for those small little problems that i faced with the guitar uh, I think in terms of tone and in terms of playability, these guitars are absolutely fantastic. I love it. The action is pretty low. Uh, by the way, it comes with 10 to 52 string sets, so you know you don't have to do a thing. You, you can pretty much cover anything from drop C to standard tuning. You don't need to change the string gauge too much. I think on standard tunings, you might have slightly more tightness when it comes to the bends uh, on the lower strings because the strings are slightly thicker. But uh, I think I've been on tens, you know, all my life on the JP15. So for me, it's no biggie. It works out really fine. But what I want you to do is let me know your comments and thoughts on what you think about the guitar. And if you're thinking about buying uh, one of these, what do you think? Are you convinced enough to buy it? And always any other comments you have on the video. What could I do better? What could I could improve? Anything other than the guitar you want to let me know in the comments your comments are always welcome i read all of them and i try to respond to all of them as well please let me know your thoughts and in case you aren't subscribed so far please do subscribe if you like the content of the channel and you want me to you know create more of these kind of videos to so do support me using your subscription it's free it doesn't cost a thing and it motivates me a lot to make more videos like these and as always make sure you stay safe guys keep rocking cheers Bye.